Around these parts, we are multi-sport draft leads, and we are going to prove that today with the definitive NHL playoff preview. The underdog lobby is jam-packed with Zamboni drafts, and to help us walk through this puck world, navigate us through this tricky maze, it's none other than DJ Mitchell and Matt Moody from the Morning Skate Pod. We got a game show. We're going to do high-level strategy. going to be a jam-packed, puck-filled day on Off and on the Clock. Let's do it. All right. Welcome in. This has been uh, a highly requested show. I, I synced up with DJ last year uh, to dip my toes in the playoff best ball streets for hockey. Uh, absolutely love playoff best ball regardless of sport. Was doing hoops drafts earlier today and this week on the club. And now uh, for the people, we decided to do a big collab with Off and on the Clock, Morning Skate Pod. Welcome to the show, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass it to Matt first. I mean, Matt, you are now the supreme leader winning, uh, what, third place or second place in Best Buck. So you're, you're ahead uh, of me now. I mean, oh, yeah, I finished we'll third in the Best Buck. I know uh, DJ was gunning hard to go back to back. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to take the crown from him. But, you know, third place, not too shabby considering DJ was a bit down the leaderboard. So uh, we'll, we'll get him next year. Though. Okay. Okay. I had six, six finals teams way down the leaderboard. Get it right. All right. I had six. six. Dude, that's, that's, ridiculous. Ridiculous. that's so crazy, man. Like that six is insane. <laughs> it was, that's I the mean, epitome of uh shots on goal. Yeah. I, I, I was, uh, yeah. Ovi over the past week, just a hundred shots and like only scores doesn't ever uh, actually get it on net. So it was fun though, but we're ready to get into the playoffs. I have to get my crown back. Uh, from AC Elliott. I'm not sure if he's in here watching at all. I think he's somewhat around, but congratulations to him on the win. I got to take the crown back. No no better uh, show to to get started with, with the return of the crown than coming on here giving us uh, a squares, some advice on how to do this stuff because, uh, man, I am, I'm lost. The only thing I know right now is that my Penguins uh, failed miserably, but uh, that's what happens when uh, Dubas is running the ship over there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a perfect intro to my game show because what I built for us is something that, again, I think the hardest part about getting involved in hockey is thinking you don't know what you're talking about, thinking you don't know the players. And largely, I think, you know, people don't know the NHL players in America, just, you know, just to be frank. Uh, I'm guessing some people might know McDavid and Matthews, et cetera, but maybe not as many down the line. Um, so I wanted to make a game show that kind of let everyone see that even people that are hardcore sports fans might not even really know about some players that are at least useful, um, maybe not quite draftable in this format, but I wanted to kind of, again, just have some fun, get, get things going, hopefully get some laughs in um, and just introduce everyone. Like you can just get involved because it doesn't matter how much you know in the playoffs. You just have to have good construction, good theory, and you can draft winners. Um, and Matt's going to talk way more about that stuff, which is honestly the Morning Skate podcast experience. is me clowning around, having fun, making bets, degening, and Matt being like, let's get back on track here. Okay, that player sucks. Let's let's actually go over what you should be doing. So you're getting the full experience. It that sounds, sounds like a lot like John and I. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, DJ and I got a lot in common right now. <laughs> I'm like, that player's scoring at five to one. And Matt's like, that player's playing 11 minutes. And I'm like, but he's scoring. And then he does. And it's just the best. Um, this was my Larry Nance take last night all over again. Now. Yeah, this is literally the John experience on, on this show. So this is going to work handsomely. I can't wait for this game, man. Like this, I saw like a quick preview. This is like so high effort. It's like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So I, again, we're talking hockey, we're talking hardcore Canadians. We're talking about the most influential show. I'm sure everyone was thinking he's going to bring in letter Kenny. I bring in Degrassi. I bring in the hits. I oh, don't... I thought you were going to say off and on the clock. Oh, but you meant, you meant Degrassi. <laughs> the most influential show, okay. most influential show in, in Canada. Um, it is funny because as I did this, I asked a few people in my life, I'm like, is Degrassi that big of a deal? And everyone's like, this is the most formative show of my childhood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all, all females, of course. But uh, so it's going to be either an NHL player, a Degrassi character, or a European or Russian politician. Uh, we're going to show a name. We're going to have all three of you do it together. Just pick like whatever you, you guys can discuss it amongst yourselves. Um, I guess if anyone knows for sure, maybe just sit it out yeah. if, you, if you would. But if you don't yeah. know for sure, you know, just discuss it. So, but we'll just rip right through them. I mean, there's uh, I think there's 12. 
So let's uh, get I, right into it. You guys are ready. I'm gonna hide the chat too. I, I mean, on my oh, own yeah. screen. <laughs> I don't want I don't want the chat to to spoil anything for me. I really want to give it my all because I'm kind of a uh, uh, an aficionado when it comes to names in the puck streets. I don't know if you know this about me, DJ. Especially I, uh, pronunciation of said names. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I might I might have to be the uh, the vocalizer here. I really I know that take... Drake was a Degrassi character. That's all I know. But do you know? Pete, any Degrassi knowledge before we get started? Or no, you... other. I knew the broad strokes that it's uh, it's highly uh, viewed in Canada and, like you said, formative, but uh, just enough for a quick reference, but uh, nothing digging beneath the Degrassi surface. Okay. <laughs> Matt, anything before we kick it, kick it off here? Anything you want to add? I do not think I've ever seen an episode of Degrassi, so um, I had it. Nice to me as well. I had an older sister, so I actually like memorized quite a bit of this. I'm like, oh my god, I recognize all this. So I, I'm not gonna lie to anyone. Let's kick it off with number one. We have Bobby McMahon. Oh my god, that's guys. Any... That's such a hockey player. This sounds very political. Oh man, man, he's setting us up for failure off the off the jump here. This guy isn't I've the never... McMayor man. He's not a he's not a politician. He's, I'm sure he's in that. What do you, what do you guys have a parliament? He sounds like he's sitting up there, powdered wig ass, Bobby Mc, McMahon. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm going politician with Pete. I'm with Pete on politics. Right, is... nice hockey and the other two politician. Is that the final call? Yeah. Next, let's get to the next slide. Oh, we uh, don't get. <laughs> oh, what? he's a hockey player. Uh, I did do this. <laughs> Please for the leaps. Yeah, so he, I did do this before the last night's game. So he may, I don't think he had a point in it, but a game should go up a tick. Uh, he was at one point actually playing like in the top six and getting some power play run when guys were out. Uh, he went on a pretty good stretch there of goals. He was like relevant in DFS for one minute, but he's not terrible. Matt, anything you want to say about Bobby McMahon? Uh, he's the most average player you could possibly imagine, which in Toronto means he's the next great thing. They love him. Yeah, I, that is so – he is like the guy that everyone in Toronto loves uh, just because he's just a, a, so average. Anything? Uh, I got a question. Is this yeah. the kid who was the Kamloops Blazers captain and then got called up like a bit into the year? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. No? Okay. Uh, if you pull, I, I, I don't know. I gotta be honest. Like you got I'm me. I'm gonna look that. it up after. I'll look it up after. John's That's... always got the most obscure references to to, uh, to throw out for for people. They, don't they feel draft... bad. I don't think so though. They drafted okay. someone surprisingly last I year think, though, right? Um, I think it, yeah. I mean, there is um. The, I'll it, find it after. Him. Ethan okay, Cohen. Okay. Yeah, next, him. Let's go to the. Let's go to the next one. All right. We have uh, Pius Suter. Nez, See, can you pronounce that for us? First name for us, dude. It's literally trying to yeah, bait Pius. us I, I, into politician. It's like Pontius Pilate, you know, like it's trying yes, to with that is... pious. I bet this is some random ass Degrassi character. Hmm. Pius does kind of sound like a like a French Canadian actor, doesn't it? Suter's mm. such a hockey I, I, name. I, I, like, I, I know Suter. That's they're trying to trick us, John. They know, I mean, yeah. know that Suter's a hot name. Just, I, I just want to add that I use the character names in Degrassi and not the actor or actress name. Just just okay. so you're aware. Just, just to put that out there, just in case there's any confusion. So dude, okay. I, I actually I actually think this guy was on the Nuckies for a bit. I actually think I know this guy. Mm. I'm going puck guy. I'm going puck guy. Okay. All in agreement? Yeah, yeah. John sounded pretty convincing there. Well, because he's right there we... over Canucks. He actually last night uh, was out there. I don't think he scored. I'm pretty sure he had a primary assist, so that assist should go up one. Uh, but, yeah, he's been pretty useful. Like, he's been a guy throughout his career that can score as well. Um, moved around a lot, but I think found a good home in Vancouver. The we only reason I remember him is because he had a hat trick one game that was like a big comeback game. That's the only reason that I sounds... remember him. That sounds right. I mean, he he can definitely score, and he plays a lot with JT Miller, and he's moved up with Pedersen. Like, he's just a guy that can play with those guys, and not relevant in this format, but, again, a great name. Our next one, we have Victor Ponta. Oh, man. How is this not a politician? Yeah, that just screams Russian politics, right? And just from a game theory-wise, I just can't imagine DJ just doing all hockey and then just right. being a dick. Like, he's got to sprinkle in been, some of these, I and I got to keep martingaling. Really um, yeah. Victor Ponta. I mean, 
God, Ponta. We're back to those like those hard P politician sounding yeah. names. I've been wrong every time. So my gut says politician. So I'm going to say Degrassi. Politician. Politician. Yeah, yeah. you're the prime minister. I suck at this. I, I literally was just looking through like European politicians and this guy came up and I was like, I wonder why. He got into quite a bit of hot water. That's why he only lasted a couple months as prime minister in Romania. Quite a bit of hot water. <laughs> uh, it was... It was short-lived, uh, to say the least. So, yeah, uh, Victor Ponta, politician. Uh, we can move to the next one. Jimmy Brooks. Country singer. <laughs> no, dude, this is th this is a layup, you guys. This is Jimmy. This is wheelchair Jimmy from yeah. Degrassi. Degrassi, come on. Oh, it has to okay. Be. This All is right. a freebie. Yeah. Oh, Drake. <laughs> yeah, it's Drake. I, yeah, I it was it. that was that was the gimme. I just had to include the wheelchair picture. Of Drake. Had, um, had to. You had to had do to. it. I never knew his I, last was name on the show. Wheelchair though. in that show? Uh, yeah, he got well, shot. It I think. Yeah, he gets shot oh. in, in school. Have you never seen um the uh the Sorry, Nick what? <laughs> No, I've never like as I'm. So, I feel so, like this is stolen valor for me to call myself Canadian because I've literally never seen Degrassi before. Yeah. I, I mean, again, I, I, you know, like, the, so if you watch the Nick Kroll show, they did a whole show called like Wheels Up High. And it was basically every single person was like in a wheelchair based on Degrassi. Very funny sketch as well. Um, but yeah, so there's Aubrey Graham, otherwise known as Drake to a couple people, at least. I think people know him as that as well. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yannick Jado. Yannick Jado. I'm going politician. I don't think that guy plays puck. It it sounds like he plays puck. I don't think he plays puck. Yannick, how many how many problematic, you know, politicians do you think DJ could have scrounged up? You know, is is he going back to this well? Over I mean, there's only over? so few, right? I mean, yeah, they're this game has my head in pretzels. I know I'm wrong. Uh, this does sound politician. I'm going politician. It's gonna be some fucking puck left guy. winger. Yeah, I'm going puck. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it. Yeah, just get to the net. It is a politician. Yes. <laughs> this guy, this guy really in no hot water. Party he was the activist and politician. He did run. He did not win. But yeah, this guy, I didn't see any red flags, but you never know. I mean, like you're saying, notorious good guys in politics always, but this guy seemed okay to me. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know him personally, but yeah. Next we have JT York. Uh, JT York. This is uh, like a Downton Abbey character. Is that one of the options? It, it yeah um, i mean it's a trick question it's downton abbey <laughs> I, <laughs> the, I forgot that the thing is one of the answers i know there's i know there's a york in the nhl i think it's like i think it's dalton or cam and then i know jt miller so i think this is like meant to trick us and they put them together and it's not a puck guy so what do you think politician i don't know Politician or Degrassi? I don't think this is a puck guy. I think this is designed I, to look right. like a puck guy. I, I'm going puck. I'm finally getting a puck one in the win column here. Uh, I'm gonna go with Pete. I'm gonna go with Pete. All right, I'm going uh, Degrassi. It is, oh, it is. James Tiberius York. Yeah, wow. he got he look got at stabbed. The double he got stabbed caller. Today. In the Puka Shell, you know John had, or that's not quite Puka Shell. That's Puka Shell adjacent, though. For sure. yes. Dude, John that's literally guy. That's literally what I looked like in grade 10. That's a picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, but, it's uh, so Canadian to call it grade 10, too. It I is. Love it. Yeah, 10th oh, grade. yeah. 10th grade versus grade 10. That that yeah. old one. Yeah. So rest in peace to, to JT because, yeah, he got stabbed to death. Unfortunately, the show is very normal. Uh, Next. <laughs> Kiefer Sherwood. Uh, that's a puck guy. Kiefer, Kiefer was Kiefer. born to play puck, man. You like you name your kid Kiefer, he's picking up a hockey stick by age two. Is it? Yeah, Kiefer the keeper. I mean, that he was just destined, Ooh. kind of a money maker s name there. Yeah, I'm going. I'm gonna say he's a he's a goalkeeper. I like that call. I, I'm going. I'm going puck because Sherwood is just renowned for equipment, guys. That's like uh, they they make the like the adult sticks. hockey shoulder pads yep. and the old wood sticks. I'm, I'm, we're going yeah. puck guys all around. It is. Yeah. Nice. Doesn't we're look back. like uh, a keeper though. No, he's no, not he a keeper. He's a, he's a winger. He's a winger. Uh, yeah. Again, just like a random third line scorer type of guy. Uh, not okay. useful. 
But yeah, we'll, we can go, get to the next one. There's only a couple left. This is Marco fun. Del Rossi. Politician. Yeah, because I, I want to say like the Degrassi, Del Rossi, he's trying to throw us off the scent mm. with this being like, it sounds like the show. Yeah. Unless that's a thing they would do with one of their naming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going, I'm going pol- politician. Yeah, All politician. right, my peanut size brain can't get away from Degrassi, Del Rossi, and I'm going Degrassi all the way here. It is Degrassi. Wow. <laughs> my first instinct. I should have gone with it. Look at that uh, lettuce, man. That is a tough look. <laughs> so, yeah, if you go to the next one, this is uh, a bit of a giveaway uh, because uh, Marco Marco Rossi is a hockey player as well. Wow. So, so yeah, click it, on the next okay. slide. So Marco, Marco Del Rossi. Del Rossi. Marco, and Marco Rossi. Rossi. And then Matt Matt had a quick mention on Marco Rossi just to, to get into how hardcore these hockey guys are. <laughs> yes. Uh, he was he sort of went famous in the summer because he's one of the top prospects for Minnesota. And he skipped his sister's wedding to train in the summer. Like he's from Austria and he didn't go home in the summertime where they famously do not play hockey. And that was viewed as a positive thing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the Minnesota Wild missed the playoffs. Uh, and it wasn't all that close either. So, you know, just, just goes to show you these hockey players, maybe not the smartest. Dude, that just gave me, like, if I was, not to, you know, default to my my NFL stuff here, but if I was doing my rounds right now, I would, like, tell every team, like, um, yeah, like, my sister's getting married right now, and I decided I wanted to be at the Combine doing these drills <laughs> instead. Like, I would get that narrative floating and be like, yeah, my, my mom actually just passed away the funeral is in about an hour, but I had to run the gauntlet, you know, like, and that's they're a, just like, oh, yeah. That's some draft day Kevin Costner stuff. Like, why wasn't anybody at his birthday party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that oh, is the most, man. yeah. And NFL guys are trying to draft him as we speak. They're listening and they're like, hold yeah. on, what did he do? Yeah. Um, I think we're down. I, I think this might be the last one. I'm not sure. Let go to the next slide. Yes. This is our final round. This is the Russian, Russian roulette. Finale. roulette. <laughs> so we have, we have, I will tell you, it is a Russian politician and a hockey player, and you just have to tell me which one's the politician and which one's the hockey player. And that's I, I, I'm so glad you said that because I was about to galaxy brain like uh, you know a Bash brother uh, plot line on Degrassi with these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have. Uh, you know, actually, Ness, I'm, would you mind pronouncing the names for us? Sure, I, I, sure, <laughs> yeah. So on the left here, first option is uh, Victor Zubkov, uh, giving giving Russian politician to me. I'm not sure. Uh, and then Vladislav uh, Gavrikov, which, um, you know, to me sounds, sounds more like a hockey guy. Uh, so I think I'm going to go politician puck guy. What do you guys think? I'm going the opposite. Vladislav okay. Gavrikov. This guy, this is a guy who has banished multiple people to the upper Siberian peninsula for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm in lockstep with Pete. I got puck guy on the left. Victor with a K is just, you know, dead giveaway. He's a good defenseman. He's a stay-at-home defenseman. Next slide. Unfortunately, <laughs> Zubkov was the prime minister for one singular day before handing it over. To one buy, uh, day? Prime this Putin. is bullshit. I don't even think he got in trouble. Oh, he's still a part of the like the the whole thing with Putin. Like, I, I guess they're good. They're cool. Like, he was there for a while. I don't really know what he – I think he's kind of – out of the way now, uh, more or less, but for one day. And I thought that fit well with my Romanian guy. Like these guys didn't last long. They were the top, but not for long. Um, so yeah. And then last we have Gavrikov. Um, yeah. He's probably the top, one of the top minutes guys in LA, but just more of a stay at home guy for mm. your LA Kings. So yeah, that's the game. And as you can see from this, None of them truly knew a single one of these hockey players, and all of them had played in more than 50 games. I made that a prerequisite. And everyone besides Rossi is in the playoffs, and like all of them matter to their teams. They have top six minutes, uh, power play wow. run, some of them. So these are not guys that are completely like, oh, they played one game and they're really playing for Abbotsford or whatever. Like these guys actually are. are was was the chat the screaming at us? I didn't have the chat pulled up for this either. Were they mad at uh, us not getting the NHL players? I just looked at the chat and all I saw <laughs> – was you're missing the fact that his boy married and banged his sister. 
It was I don't just, know who that's. I don't know. I, that's that's about Marco Rossi. I'm pretty sure it's the other direction, though. Yeah, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe it's the inverse. But um, Johnny, Johnny's Johnny's unhinged, man. He's he, he's, <laughs> he's had some wild tweets this morning I or do. last <laughs> night. That just this dude, I this I, I kind of I kind of love that that take comes up and that's like. You're really close, actually. Like it's just that, that's pretty much what happened. Um, so yeah, hockey's a lot of fun. Let's get into drafting. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> thank you so much for that. Yeah, that was thank good. you. That, that was, was uh, that was great. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, do you guys want to start? I put together like a 30 second sheet before we look at like ADP and stuff like this, and I'm sure we can add way more sophisticated stuff to it. Um People will love my conditional formatting of sticking the stuff oh, in the middle of the D column. That's his favorite part about the sheets I make. Um, I don't know. I just kind of did this. We did a similar thing in the past, like, you know, when we were talking through playoffs and stuff like that. What are, like, the major differences that people need to know about playoff puck considered to the other sports in terms of, you know, structure, how many teams we pair together, that sort of stuff? I will take that. Um, I think the first thing is the, the most important thing that people probably don't know is how the playoffs are actually structured. So it's much like once the seeding is finalized, which it will be after tonight or maybe after tomorrow night, I'm not sure uh, when the West is going to be finalized. But um, once you get seeded, you go through sort of like the NCAA style bracket where you're not being reseeded from round to round. I'm not sure how unique that is to hockey versus the other sports, but that's a very important element. And so you'll get seeded into four different quadrants. There'll be four teams and one division, you know, next to division, next division, next division, next division, two in the East, two in the West. And the winners of those four will then play in the conference finals. And then those two winners, obviously, in the Stanley Cup finals. So that sort of makes it easy from a conceptual standpoint of how do I keep, you know, multiple teams alive until the third round, until the fourth round, when obviously in the Stanley Cup final, you want to have a live team. Um, so that's just the first thing to keep in mind that there's sort of a very uh, strategic structure to the, the playoffs. You're not getting reseeded after every round. Um, beyond that, you're going to largely want to focus on the forwards. Um you know, when we're drafting, there's, I guess, there's several ways you can go from there, but um, you score one center, one wing, one D, and one goalie in each round, plus two flexes, which can, which can be any position but the goalie. That's different than regular season puck, as, mm -hmm. as you call it, um, where you have two wings scoring in one flex, which in the regular season inflates the value of wings because... Well, as we go through ADP, you'll see a lot of the best players are at the center position. In the playoffs, that doesn't really matter because you can have two flexes. You know, you're not sort of forced to start two wings each week. Um, so that's like a big difference as far as people who are really into the NHL um, versus other sports. I think it's largely going to be similar to other playoff type formats because the correlation of advancement is so important like there's really no way you can you know win a football contest or any contest in any other sport without having like a stacked team make it through just because only you know only two teams can play for the finals um, when where all the money is so i think that's sort of the really high level uh view um dj do you want to add anything to that before we sort of talk about like the specific teams and you know all those other takes no I mean, it's just like we were so regiment and me and you especially were like really pushing the three, seven, three, three narrative in the regular season. And that's just out the window. Like I'm not ultra specific to like the center wing D goalie flex situation. Like I'm more specific to actually how I'm drafting teams for like players per team, et cetera, which Matt did a bunch of research on, which is in the puck guys and it's in our discord. Um, so okay. if you have more questions about like specifics, but Matt, I'll pass it right back yeah. to you. I've talked enough already. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Numi came through and actually got us Zamboni data, like the raw data for the first time. We've never had this before. We've drafted all year last year. You know, everything was sort of based on vibes. To, to, you know, just like right. we didn't really know like what actually was winning or what was advancing, you know, so on and so forth. And we just got this a couple of days ago. So I'm honestly not convinced mm -hmm. that my stuff is without bugs. Um, but, you know, just 
brute forcing Excel stuff because that's all I'm capable of doing. Um, I was pretty adamant that four players per team, you know, four, four, two, two, you have 12 picks doing four, four, two, two. Um, that was sort of the way to go with some extra elements that don't really need to be discussed now. It does seem like though, at a first glance that five and six man stacks as like a main stack um, are, you know, going to be pretty useful um, and maybe even are more beneficial. It's tough to draw any certain conclusions because of just how limited, you know, one year's worth of sample is. Um, but there's a lot of structure work and a lot of other thoughts, you know, uh, not only in the, the Deposit Kingdom Discord, like DJ mentioned, but also the Morningscape Pod has a Discord channel. Um, and if people like betting and, you know, the DraftKings side of things, that's what we mostly cover in there with an underdog channel as well. I shared the wrong one to the chat there. I shared the pick of info that you did in the past there that was still mm -hmm. pinned in here. But in like super limited bro science version of people can go read this thread that you put together with all the sweet screenshots in the deposit kingdom here. Like what was your biggest takeaway just to summarize the entirety of this yeah. post that I'm now pinning? Yeah, it was, it was the, so the most surprising thing I saw again, this being a person who was trying to get four and two basically in the finals. And if I'm lucky, get four and four from like my two core teams making it to the final. Um, okay. Seeing that five teams in six stacks, seeing that those teams seem to advance more and also better into the finals, that was sort of a surprise to me. So I'm certainly opening up, you know, the the five and six man stacks, I think more just as a general rule. Um, and, you know, there's theory thoughts that I have that sort of go into that. But I think we can discuss that when we're drafting versus, you know, boring okay. everyone off the bat. So the stack structure of like six four one one, for instance, that has this like thirty three advance mm -hmm. to the finals, like that's yeah, the stuff you know, you're opening your eye up to. Yeah, pretty much. The the um, you know, in last year's data is also interesting because the format changed a ton year over year. I'm not sure if that's happened in other sports, but basically last year you drafted in a six man pod, the top one advance out of the first round. Mm. This year it's the top two, which means it's that much easier to get through. Mm -hmm. players that don't produce all that well in round one. Um, and I think that makes stacking more powerful because you don't need the perfect team in round one to advance. You just need players who advance. Um, yeah. And then so it goes to one. Them. Yeah. And then it goes to one of eight. So it's like, I, and I, I agree. And again, like this was sort of the me and Matt debate to start was like, how much do you stack? And I was getting a little bit bolder. Um, and I do think it was just because last year, it was so apparent in the finals that I wasn't going to win. I just didn't have enough of the cup final. Uh, but then again, last year, it wasn't chalky at all. So if you're building a non-chalky team, maybe that that's kind of my takeaway of like, maybe you do overstack a bit more because uh, you can do it without any real problem. And you can still get some of the guys up top that are like, you could get McDavid, stack a non that not that chalky cup final. That's kind of what me and um, Billy Jones did last night where we, we got like a McDavid team and then it wasn't ended up that being that chalky, but super high correlation um, comparatively that if you're trying to build Colorado, Carolina, it's a lot more difficult because those guys are all going in the first round. It might be almost impossible to advance through round two, really the gauntlet round. Um, so I do think it's a bit more team specific is my takeaway entirely, but definitely I guess reaffirming my prior of like at least five in one of my stacks is sort of what I'm looking at. Maybe not, always always because the 4422 is fine like mm -hmm. it's not detrimental especially if you can thread the needle with the 4 4 you're going to be in great shape but um all of this to say still not solved in any capacity and this is definitely with a grain of sand because we don't have much data and For, uh i will say don't take more than four teams like that that yeah. seemed pretty clear that if you're yeah. stacking five times like you're just so spread out it's not going to win yeah okay. from uh, just like a, a, an overall edge standpoint, I know like, you know, you, I, I've been doing some of the NBA playoff ones and like, there's two, maybe like one third of all the teams in your pods are not approaching it optimally, taking one player from every team, stuff like that. How often is that happening in these Zamboni drafts or are the drafters uh, pretty dialed in? Would you say? I would argue that they're more dialed in than I've ever seen. Um, but I also, you know, I, I only have like 20 drafts on at this point in time. So I'm certainly not an expert on this specific draft. Um, I, I do feel like there's a bit more 
uh, just from other sports, people cross over and they know that in the other sports you stack in the playoffs. And so for hockey with stacking being paramount to begin with, I don't think there's a ton of like, I don't think there's a ton of people clicking on the NHL lobby, just going, oh, I want one player from each team. I haven't seen that all too frequently in my experience, but that's also, again, you know, hockey's about stacking. People know that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you can sort of see that with other sports too. Um, Like people are approaching play, like there's still a really, really strong edge in playoff best ball. Like Pete was saying in NBA, there's still people that don't draft optimally, but I think people are slowly but surely getting sharper in these, in these streets and the edge I think is slowly drying up, but it can also lead to more efficient lobbies where everybody is like drafting in their best interest uh, at the same time, which is like kind of interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, I think it's a good little like step back to remind everybody that like the puck playoffs are an effing gauntlet, especially comparative to like NBA and stuff like that. And when DJ did the draft with us last year, like I'll just bring up what happened last year where everybody was pushing up Boston in that first round of every single draft. And then they get bounced by a wild card team. And then said wild card team goes all the way to play in the finals and stuff. Just in terms of like range of outcomes, I think it mirrors what we saw in MLB last year, where like Arizona can find their way all the way to the finals. In Puck, you can get Florida and Vegas to find their way all the way to the finals and play one another, even though like Vegas was going every single draft. You know, Florida wasn't going every single draft, that sort of thing. So I think it's just like a good reset and reminder that like, yeah, the chalk is the chalk, but like I I think comparative to like any other sport it's probably the most extreme in terms of range of outcome in playoff series. Would you guys agree with that? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're drafting basketball. I mean, like it's almost a dead certainty that one of what the Celtics or nuggets are going to be in the finals, if not both that, that just, there's nothing like that. It exists in the odds market for, uh, for the NHL. Okay. Good shout. Um, that being said, who are some of your guys' favorites, favorite targets, and just like overall favorites to to come out of East, West, and or teams that you know won't overlap with one another now that we know kind of the bracket. I would say for, for for me, Colorado is a team that I really feel strongly about. Um, they they really the last week has been tough as a newfound Colorado backer, um, <laughs> but they made a trade at the trade deadline that basically shored up their center position. And they traded a defenseman and they have the best defenseman in the world in Cal McCarr uh, when he's on his game. So like there's, um, I, I think the I middle, saw a lot of middle Colorado. stat trade that one. Yeah. The middle. Yep. Um, okay. And so now they have really like, they have a deep lineup. Uh, they seem to be rounding into health. Um, and you know, you're paying a premium for McKinnon. He's, you know, he goes one or two in almost every draft. Um, but in the first round, you can almost always get one of Ranton and or McCarr. Um, so it is pretty, nice to build through them um dj's i believe wearing his winnipeg jets jersey uh they get the jets in the first round it's going to be a slugfest um but i really do like colorado because if they advance you know exactly where the production's coming from and they have Mm -hmm. some guys deeper in the draft that you can stack around as well um that we can you know sort of talk about if we wind up drafting colorado where does it fall you know again let's work under the assumption that uh, a lot of people aren't as familiar uh, with, with the puck uh, contest. Where does it fall on that spectrum of, you know, NFL where that random MBS spike week can literally be what drags you through to another round versus NBA where you're going seven game series, which we are here. Is it closer to that where it's like, you can't take these fringe guys because they're just going to get lapped by the dudes who are on the ice all the time. It's, it's really that this season has been, otherworldly as far as the offensive upside that's that's been on the table like we've had Connor mcdavid you know do his thing last year for instance there were basically four guys who did what Connor mcdavid did last year including Connor mcdavid who did that this year they're spread out throughout the, the conferences you know there's there's uh kucherov there's mckinnon there's matthews and there's mcdavid they're spread out through the conferences you know east west whatever so it's really tough for me to think that like none of those guys, for example, like make it into, you know, the highest scores. It's just that, you know, do you need those scores to advance out of round one? And then after round one, it's all a, you know, it's all a crapshoot. So like it's, it's very predictable in that the best players will be the best players. 
it's just not that predictable. And will the best players still be around in rounds three and four, which I think is sort of the, the unique conundrum of the NHL versus yeah. other sports where yeah, I mean, will always be around. Like every draft you're doing in any sport in the playoffs, like you're going off the assumption that you're correct. So if you're saying I'm taking McDavid number one, that is now your baseline. Like you're never saying, well, what happens if McDavid fails? You already lost. You're getting crushed. Like it doesn't matter. So I agree. Um, there are some fringe guys that are going later that I think are more viable than others for all of these top teams. So to me, it's more of just like getting overweight on those guys in that circumstance rather than thinking like, well, I've already started with, you know, for example, I don't know, uh, you know, Vancouver, right? I've already started with them. Someone ended up kind of jumping aboard as well, and they took a couple of guys. Well, I'm just going to take, you know, Pius Suter, a guy that we mentioned earlier. It's like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't go that far, right? There's no need to go to way take down a the line. To character. I mean, like, yeah, to take, <laughs> <Degrassi character. laughs> to take a Degrassi or foreign politics. There's no need to do that. Like, so I think in football, like, that's kind of the MVS equivalent of like, well, I think there, there's a guy that could have a big enough spike week. I don't think it does exist in hockey in the same scenario. And like, you're probably better off just saying, you know what, this is not going to be a five. Uh, you know, five, four, two, one. It's going to be a four, four, two, two. And I think that's going to give you a better chance to actually make it through the gauntlet of the second round, which is definitely the most difficult until the final. Um, a couple of things there, just macro landscape, as like you guys were alluding to there, like we haven't had, I think we've had 16, 100 assist seasons ever. And we haven't had one for what? Almost 20 years, something like that. Okay, and, yeah. and, and like, Gretzky's like four or five of them, and we might have two guys do it this year. Connor Connor McDavid has a hundred there, and then Kucherov has one more game to get one more assist there. So just talking to the landscape, and we hadn't had a ninety point defenseman in you know almost as long a time. And Quinn Hughes got there there with that ninety one. So yeah, just speaking to like the macro landscape of scoring being up amongst the upper echelon of elite we are seeing a big divide that you know there was a little more parity in terms of like goal distribution from line one line two line three in the past we're starting to see the stars be superstars in in this modern nhl era right yeah, if, if only the game, uh, the league could market these players and people were aware that Austin Matthews is the all time leader in Maple Leafs for goals and probably going to get 70 tonight or, you know, people that even were aware of the existence of guys like Nikita Kucherov. I mean, that would be pretty fun right. because it's been an unbelievably cool season. Uh, I think the end of the year has been fireworks and spectacular and people uh, kind of jumped in more and more. Um, I try to, you know, I see it through betting. Obviously, people kind of jumping in. Um, but I think the playoffs is really where we have a chance to actually get the, this game to grow because more and more of the big name in the media are starting to talk about it. And this playoffs is setting up to be, I think, absolutely perfect with round one matchups that are super duper competitive, a lot of storied franchises going against each other. And I just cannot wait to burn $1,500 right away when I <laughs> with these best bus rosters, best buck rosters. Anything to add, Matt? No, I think uh, you know, I don't have anything to add. Oh, I'm just I'm looking gotta, at the chat here. I, I got a question. We were talking primarily in terms of the numbers that we were saying, like uh, you said, the three three seven three was the meta of the regular season, and then we were talking a lot about stacks, and the image that we brought up was actually stack structure. What is the build structure when wings aren't as important anymore? Yeah. So. Um, Basically, if you're drafting more than two goalies, it seems like you're just dead. Um, you can only start okay. one. And if you're stacking okay. teams, you know, you're hoping they advance. So that's sort of the, you know, like it does seem pretty clear that once you add three or even four, you're sort of, uh, you know, you're, you're just limiting your chances of getting skater points elsewhere. Um, def- defensemen, as far as filling in a flex spot, aren't going to fill it nearly as often. So I think it's best to limit that to two. There are some teams, though, where I think you can make the argument that, like, if you're tacking on a late round stack, that third defenseman might actually be just as viable as a forward. Um, okay. So I would say, can no you give me an example of that, Matt? Sure. Roman Yossi on Nashville, okay. uh, he and yeah. Philip Forsberg are sort of the drivers of their bus. If they advance, I believe they will play the Vancouver Canucks in round one. Um, if they advance, it's almost certain that Roman Yossi is going to be one of the highest scoring. Man. And if you're taking, you know, a, an Edmonton defenseman and say Adam Fox or something from the Rangers side, I think Yossi's an okay third defenseman to add just because he's going to score like a wing or a center. And then forward wise, 
you're probably just going to mix and match between, you know, you're saying two D two goalies um, and then there's eight more spots left. It doesn't really matter if you go like five centers, four centers, three centers. I think if you lopsided it to where it's like six wings, two centers, that's probably overdoing it or vice versa. Um, but largely with forwards, it just sort of depends on like who's available, who goes with the other players you've drafted, and will you be able to fill out a lineup in the finals? So if you have, you know, if you have two centers and they're both from the east, well, you know, that you you might want one from the west just to, to sort of fill that in. Um, or maybe if you have one center from the east, you want to take a second center also from the east, just so that if one of your four core stacks makes it, you're filling in that center spot. That's almost never going to be a problem, though, because, again, there, there's so much upside at the forward positions that you're going to want to be drafting a lot of them anyway. Cool. Yeah, I don't have a ton to add. I mean, it's team specific. It's guys, it's player specific. Like, I think you just got to get into the drafting and kind of see it to believe it. Okay, cool. Let's do that then. Yeah, Pete, what's up? Yeah, no, I was gonna say let's uh because I do I'm gonna have to dip at, at one. So I would love to uh to do a, a draft with you guys before I head out. Because last good. year, DJ, the uh the team we drafted was so sick. It, I yeah. think it was an abs Oilers team. Was does that sound right? I th- yeah. Uh I, I thought it was Dallas for some reason, but I don't really remember. I mean, again, you I were the we only had a person third team. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like you're the only person I know that had a hundred percent advancement in hockey historically. That's the only person <laughs> yeah, I know of. Exactly. But- we, we do have to run it back. We do have to get you to keep that streak alive, at least with one, if not 150 games. Exactly. Somewhere he, he's the way. only guy on the site that has 100% advancement in both baseball and puck. Yeah. <laughs> Where are my special horns, underdog? <laughs> Come on. All right, we're jumping right in. Pete, do you have horns on the site? You must. No, it's one of sore my... Sore subject, John. It's a very wow, sore I'm... subject. <laughs> I'm so sorry to bring it's that up. It's such a sore subject that I thought about Max entering some of the double ups with tournament teams just to try to uh, backdoor my way into them. <laughs> Who was that that did that this year? Paul. They got Paul got yeah. the horns, but then the he actually up. earned it in a in a hockey uh, contest, mm. I believe. Yeah, yeah. The, I think he won the empty netter like a couple weeks later. There. Yeah. So, you know. Just, oh, Nez, you got in here, you cheeky bastard! So I was taking some diligent notes over here. Um, so you guys are you guys are screwed. I'm I'm gonna put <laughs> this this knowledge this the, the quizzes to good work, and, uh, and I'm gonna build myself a monster on stream. I like it. Um, right. who, who just like macro takes, guys? Like, who's the team coming out of the West? Who's coming out of the East? Who's got the easiest path? Who's got the hardest path thus far? Matt? Yeah, so the Rangers and Carolina have probably the easiest paths. Um, They get to play some pretty weak teams in the Metro Division. Now they play each other in the next round, presumably. But if you're looking as far as like, you know, odds on favorites to advance one or two rounds, I would say those two teams are probably at the top of the list. Just because uh, the, the other Eastern Division is going to be a rock fight, it's Tampa as the wild card there, which, you know, um, they're they're a very like, good team still. Um, that's like having the Lakers as the wild card. Ooh. Yeah, um, and then out west, I truly don't think the wild cards are dead at all. Like in the East, they're kind of you know like there's two teams that just kind of seem dead. In the West, I'm pretty sure every team is live. Uh, I like okay, Matthews so- here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. He's just so good that, like, I don't know. Maybe. Don't it's not a normally go a spot or two earlier in these. It looks like. Yeah. He's the four he's right. almost almost always. I've seen him yeah. fall. Yeah, I've seen him fall to like six, but he, he's just so good that um, I like building around Toronto. You can get options at almost any point in the draft as well. Whether you want to do a you know onslaught sack, whether you just want to take Matthews and one other piece, um, that's. I think a great pick. Yeah. I yeah, mean, the, yeah. I, oh, we're back on the clock, but the Toronto narrative, Pete, is like every single year they just rip your heart out. Like that's the, mm-hmm. they're, they're the, they're the Chargers. They're the Chargers. We want to get excited about Austin Eckler, but we can't in the playoffs. DJ, do we want to build your Winnipeg or do we start with Colorado? No, no. I, I think you just take me go here. I've done it a bunch. I mean, I have no issue with it at all. Like there's enough Colorado down the line. And even if we end up with two Colorado players, I mean, again, the reason I wear the Winnipeg, the reason I'm repping, like, this is the team I'm rooting for. I bet them preseason. People 
said I was stupid, like one person, but <laughs> I'm just going to pretend like everyone everyone was a naysayer. Um, that was our puck luck biggest edge for a cup favorite or a cup to win. It was like 35 to one. Um, they're probably not going to win, but they just absolutely trounced Colorado in Colorado, like seven to nothing to win the home ice advantage in the first round. So I don't think it's crazy to think they could win, but I mean, I think Colorado's a better team. I mean, I'm going to be putting a crisp $100 bills on Edmonton to win the cup. It's just sort of one of those, you know, like they haven't done it yet, but that's every team until they do it. And they have the best player in the world in Connor McDavid, who is truly an alien. He's on another planet. If you're going to watch one team, watch him. You'll see every team just back off, try to defend in a different way. So I, uh, I'm i going to be hitching my actual like wagon to them more than anything. Nez, mm-hmm. what are you going to do I, here though? Uh, you know, I like to, to go Rangers just because I like getting the best goalie in hockey, you know, just like oh. locking down that goalie. Get the, get the correlation going on oh. there. And then this, this is perfect, right? I've got my East. I got the top team in the East. Like, I don't know about you guys. I just want the best teams. So let's go ahead and start building out our star stack on the other side. Mm. I mean, the, you took the third be best. Guys. You took the third best Dallas star player. Put some respect on Jason Robertson. Everybody son. knows Dallas two has been cooking, not Dallas one, bud. I bet Nez can't wait to draft a second goalie too. Right now, I can just tell. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, DJ. The mm-hmm. winner of last Zamboni did not start Elander? a goalie. Is that right? No, they had both. They had um, they had Bobrovsky. So they had the losing goalie, but the winning goalie was not there. So like two years in a row now, the winning Stanley Cup goalie did not make it to the finals because they didn't start. Or am I taking there. Nylander? Why? Yeah, yeah, I would take again. Okay, I like that. Right. Yeah, because you're not really in jeopardy of losing Georgiev. The the team you're gonna have a, the pick before the McKinnon team. And I doubt someone just takes him. Um, I actually had the same exact thing as the 101 as, in my last draft I did, where I got the McDavid, Leon, Hyman, and then watched Bouchard go. <laughs> and then someone actually snipes New Skinner on me. But mm. I do think, like, one we of the need biggest... some direction, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. I I mean, I, I kind of lean Georgia of myself. But, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I think Georgia of. Because um, is. I think. Mm-hmm. Is there any um, potential switching of tandies in the postseason yeah. with certain guys? There, so that's one of the I think under discussed just in a general sense is that last year Boston was like you know the team of destiny. They were gonna you know whatever. They had two goalies that they basically switched on and off the entire year. They went to the playoffs and that goalie that they rode fell apart. Sort of down the last ten games of regular season and into the playoffs fell apart. They seem like a team that's primed to literally go every other in the playoffs. Um, Colorado's a bit of an interesting situation in that they have a relatively acclaimed like prospect goalie backing up right now. And their starter is a guy who we haven't seen do this for all that long. He's been their starter for two years now. The workload might have gotten to him. Like these guys fall apart like no no other, but they're also so streaky that like you know, Sergey Bobrovsky was left for dead. And all of a sudden last year he takes the net and he just runs to the final. So like, yeah. I think being too like, Oh, take locked on oh, this guy's going to get benched. Like honestly, outside of like Igor, <laughs> um, like almost every guy can get benched. I think like it's, it's very, yeah. very rare. I, I mean, yeah. On thir- Yeah. On 32 thoughts, they talked about how Bednar gave George, have the vote of confidence and that they would pick, you know, they would really have to start to falter. But again, in that scenario where they're going to the backup is Colorado winning. I mean, they're winning the cup. They're going to the backup goalie. They're jumping ship. Winnipeg's way up on them. Like, I know that scenario could happen again, but they might just fizzle out completely. And what does it matter? Mm-hmm. Um, if you got Barner and Val back to you. I honestly, like, I take Val here because I think Barner gets back, but it's totally up to you, Matt. I mean, any thoughts on that? Um, I slightly lean Marner, but again, I, th- I think you could get both if you want both. Um, yeah. All so, right. Let's do like, – Let's do Val first and then and then do the Marner thing. It's crazy that Kucherov leads the NHL in points right now and he's just sitting here right now. Yeah. They're going They're up against Florida. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, if yeah. Florida was a team a month ago, like everyone was all in on Florida. And you know, they, they got a little cold or whatever, but they're still, you know, they're still a team to be feared. So that's certainly one. Yeah, I agree. I, I think yeah. you get Marner back. You, yeah, I mean, I think it, it literally yesterday it went from 
they're definitely like Tampa's playing Boston to Tampa's playing Florida. And I think that's scaring people off of Tampa just a little bit more. And I, I tend to agree. I think Florida's a better team, but the Atlantic's an absolute gauntlet, no matter what. You have to beat Boston and Toronto or Tampa and Toronto. Um, well, I mean, well, I guess we're drafting Toronto here. So we'll say, uh, you know, Boston and Florida or Tampa. Like it, it's unbelievably difficult. So uh, that's like hard to pick out of the East. But I think honestly, like, Anything can happen, but like Rangers and Carolina too. Like I have no take there, but again, Nez is drafting a pretty good, uh, a pretty good roster. I got a take. It's, yeah. it's Rangers, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Rangers over here. That's the take. Even though I think I messed up because I took uh, Trocheck. Uh, definitely should have went Fox. Uh, I, I think. Oh. I don't know if maybe count there at the one hundred and one would have done Trocheck if I didn't do that and 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 took Fox, but. Uh, Feeling a little, little, little scorned, getting uh, getting Fox taken away, but we got we got Truba as well uh, for the, for the defenseman for yeah, for Matt, we're not we're not honestly, I'm interested, Matt. What do you think about that? Because I mean, all year until the injury started for the Rangers, it was like okay, Truba, great rates, Fox, point guy, but not really the rates. But as soon as the defenseman went down, Fox kind of turned into a new guy. Do you think that Fox should move up the boards a bit more, or do you think Truba is still viable at the end? Uh, well, I mean, that those kind of seem like different questions because I think Truba is totally viable at the end. Uh, he's a guy who isn't going to really win you a contest, but he will give you a score to, you know, that will compete with, you know, other fringe defensemen um, late in the draft. Adam Fox has really uh, developed into a fantasy star the last few months. I have no idea if that's sustainable or not is the problem. Like he's been a guy for years who's been very much, I'm going to get some assists. I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to block shots. You know, I'm not really going to score goals. Um, As I need so, help. But, yeah, I mean, no, Morgan Riley. No. You, you know, you're you are looking defenseman at this point. I, you, yeah, you could convince me of Roman Yossi as well, but just because I don't believe he's going to, he, they should be playing Vancouver on the other side of the bracket, almost yeah. definitely. What do you think? I also, Matt? I also like Burns on defense, uh, oh, but Riley's fine like to fill yeah, out. Yeah, Riley's yeah. not fine, and then yeah. Yeah, um, because again, you're just trying to build the other side on either side at this point. You've yeah. already got a great, great, great stack going. Um, so what are we thinking yeah. here? We got three picks left. We got oh no, we got this one goes twelve, not ten. Twelve. Oh. Yeah. And Pete, I know there's only two minutes left. So if there's any thoughts, no, I, 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 I can uh, I can uh, bleed it here to uh, to make sure we land the plane. Okay. I got to see this one through. <laughs> All right, who are we going here, guys? Are we going? S- yeah. Hmm. I mean, yeah, Yossi should stay out of Colorado's yes. position. So uh, is I that guaranteed? It. No. It's not. It's it's almost a hundred percent. So they have the tiebreaker with LA, but if I think if if LA jumps Vegas, then okay. Vegas yeah. would have the tiebreaker because of points. But it's I, I almost think it's a lock. Like Vegas would have to lose and LA would have to I mean, Vegas isn't going to lose. They're playing like Anaheim. I, I think it's nearly a stone cold block. Like, really, the question is, is, is if uh, no, I don't. I mean, I think everything's pretty much set. I think everything's. Okay. Uh, I'm really worried. I'm, I'm on the clock and I'm staring between Pavelski, who's a name I know, and John's best friend Jamie Ben. Um, Nails. Um, DJ, what's your take there? Where's Wyatt never Johnson? Ja- never Jamie Ben. Yeah, well, I mean, Wyatt Johnson, I take first, but. Is Ottinger gone? I mean, you could really lock up. I would say why Johnson is gone. Hints. Okay, yeah. I would say you have oh, yeah. Pavelski. Yeah, Dallas is a true. very interesting team in that they have lines that are almost set in stone. Like most teams will yeah. change things up. They'll you know mix and match their best players. Dallas all year long, especially since they called up Logan Stankovan, one of the best prospects in the NHL, they've run basically three lines that are completely unique, uh, like you know uh, trios. So I wouldn't expect them to change things up too much. And if you're taking Rupe Hints, especially, you know, Jason Robertson maybe is more self-sustaining. Rupe Hints is going to be a guy who correlates really, really well with his line mates just because he's so hit or miss that, like, if he hits, he's almost certainly going alongside his line mates and Pavelski and Robertson. I'm, gl- I'm glad you said that because that's totally what I was what I was thinking. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Pavelski, Pavelski's the better. I, I, was just, I was trying to see who's already gone because I'm like, I don't. Like so, but, someone took yeah, someone took Ottinger. Because honestly, I think if you could have locked up goalie to, to that extent, I would have done it. But he's gone. Um, yeah, that's what happens whenever I enter these lobbies, DJ. People see what I'm doing, and then they just type in the teams <laughs> that I'm drafting. 
They just snipe my guys. I mean, it, 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 it's comical at this point. We're gonna yeah, go. You, I think you are. Bed. I truly think, like at this point, Dallas, like the the media narrative around Dallas and and uh, the Rangers is like those are the two teams to beat. Like those grizzled vets in Dallas, they've been here, they've done it, they know what they're doing. And then the Rangers are just on this, you know, President's Trophy run right now. Like that does feel like. So I do think that you're you're going to be competing for those teams no matter what. And you definitely won that battle because you got Panarin and Robertson. So who really cares? Like those are the the bus drivers. Um, Chad is telling me I didn't. Oh, sorry, you guys were up. Um, I'll let you make um, this pick and then and then. Do we go Tandy? We only got one right now, or is one Tandy the new meta? Johnny Tavares, we could stack up some more I, of the Toronto stuff, or what do you guys like? Phil Forsberg? I think two goalies is definitely better than just one. Yeah. Um, okay. the, the data last year shows like a 2% better advancement rate out of round one and better advancement throughout. Yeah. Not sure how sticky that is. Again, there was a lot of goalie drama the last couple of years, honestly, that even having multiple years of data might not help. But I just think from a theoretical standpoint like especially if series end in sweeps like you know th that helps the goalie obviously getting four wins but like a goalie going seven games getting peppered with shots like there's so much randomness just in the length of series that we don't deal with in football for instance that i feel like that's a pretty good um, yeah. rule of thumb to have it just have two goalies and what are we backed up one center do you guys like who i have queued up here or should we I... build out another stack Matt, what do you think? I, I mean, I think I just take Forsberg right now personally, and then just yeah. go only, yeah, just Agreed. to just to, uh, confirm it. Like, I know it's five, but you have Austin freaking Matthews. Like, you're betting on the literal best goal scorer in the world. Um, Guys, I gotta ask about our most recent pick here and kind of flex some of my hockey knowledge. Any relation? Forsberg, Peter yes, Forsberg. Dude. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh my god, wow, what a tough one. No, no, no. I, I knew no. I knew where you were going, Pete, but then I wanted to know if you remembered Peter as his first name. Oh, of course. How was I gonna forget that? <laughs> Only I, uh there's a there's a brother brotherhood kin, I believe, of Swedes, but not in not in blood. Okay, all right. Um, but yeah, I mean, Philippe Forsberg, again, I, I, again, just to say that I was almost right on something. I bet him at a hundred to one to win the central goal scoring title and he almost got 50, but Nathan McKinnon just doesn't matter. Like he had 48 and <laughs> it's like one of the most Skolansky bucks I've ever, I, that's the most I've ever won in Skolansky bucks for sure. <laughs> So I'm to... a relatively new convert to this, you know, not four, four, two, two, very structured building. I'm not sure if having Austin Matthews is enough because if Colorado makes it yeah. to the final, do we really want to be just dead if Matthews isn't there? Or do you right. want to take another Eastern I center agree. as like a one-off? Like that, that's I sort agree. of what I struggle with when I'm not drafting four, four, two, two, it's that I'm taking on correlated pieces by definition. Um, so, I mean, dude, Stanks, the, 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 one of the best prospects in hockey. I agree. I mean, he's, he should be around and like, you never know, but why are you I mean, laughing, John? The upside's there. The upside's there. He didn't know who he was eight minutes ago. <laughs> you don't know the stank, man. Come on, man. I got a Jersey. I ripped off the other letters. It's just, stank okay. Okay. Yeah, are okay, we taking, yeah. are we taking Casey Middlestad? Are we taking Ryan own nails? Are we going with a random East center? I don't think the random East center is right. Oh God. Okay. It would. I mean, it's Bo Horvat or it's Middlestad. DJ, what would you do? Because you you're in this situation. I would take Middlestad. I'd take Middlestad. Okay. I mean, where did he go? Right in the middle. Two, uh oh, nimble fingers. Oh, oh no, you got John Tavares. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we were running Dude, out of time I've, there. I've noticed the last two both. days the I mean, star method has been uh, a little laggier than usual. It's been making yeah. me look bad. Well, we'll see. we can still take Middlestad take, here, yeah, right? Take another. Ah, oh, mm, yeah. Well, what's D? Yeah. Did, um, is Taves there or no? Uh, so it's Taves or yeah, it's one or the other. It's, it's either, oh, you want me to take like the defenseman, like the, I think the Devon it's, it's one or the other. I mean, I think it's probably middle stag. You have 10 I mean, it's not like it's a big deal, but Matt, final call here. I think it's one or the other. <laughs> like, you should get one of those positions for the backup in Colorado. Uh, it's just, just Casey, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta say, this experience has made me uh sort of want to overrule the four, the five man and six man stacks because this sucks. Like not having the ability to fill out a finals roster unless the two teams that you're betting on make it like, that's a really right. dark sort of like, you know, like draft lobby to look at. Um, 
So I'm, I'm not sure because, you know, again, this was uh, two days ago we got this data and it's taken me, you know, a day and a half just to wrangle it to make it usable in Excel. Um, so yes. so moods, I've got um, one Tampa Bay player to maybe stack with my Dallas team. Should I go Andre uh, Valesky or Victor Hedman? Uh, how many goalies do you have right now? One. Just one. Igor. I th- oh, wow. It's uh, not, it, we're, we're Hedman. We're single goalie okay. guys. Doesn't right. matter. I, I yeah. knew you wanted to this. draft a second goalie. I knew it. That is literally the only goalie I would do it with. I truly like, I don't think there's a single exactly. other goalie I would. I mean, and you're already betting on the Rangers pretty strong here. Yeah, I think, and like, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, you again, you, you guys, I, 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 the perfect way to put it is if you did the same exact system with Winnipeg and like, I don't know, uh, the Islanders, that would be the stupidest draft in the world. But doing it with two of the literal most likely teams to make it on both sides, I mean, albeit Toronto a bit down the line, um, I think that's when you overstack because it's easy to do and people are already doing it. So when you're right, you're probably losing anyways to teams that are overstacking and getting those five and six. Okay, I like it. So um, this is a good experience. I'll- I I I liked I liked drafting there. I mean, like I didn't know a lot of these players. Well, I actually did know some of Dallas and, and the Rangers, but uh, that was that was fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna end up doing doing more of these just because the core right. like people seem to be staying in their lanes, which is like really important for for these drafts. I agree with that take about goalie and QB. I definitely agree. Um, yeah. What did the except, six yeah. hole do? A lot of garbage. Um, they went. They were everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. All over bang, the bang, map. Shots fired. Uh, Fellas, I yeah. do. Uh, I do have to dip. I have a high degree of confidence that our hundred percent advance rate uh, will continue. <laughs> John, be sure to mark this one accordingly. Uh, <laughs> always a great time though, catching up with you guys. You guys do such awesome uh, hockey work. Uh, DJ, I got to shout you out. One of my college buddies, he's in the chat tonight. He became a, a subscriber to all of your stuff. Just absolutely blasts off on all of your bets. Uh, so shout out to Rich. He uh, he likes your stuff way more than mine at this point. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's where we're at. But well well deserved. And uh, yeah, it's fun to have you as a part of our, our, our college group chat about all of our DJ bets. That's yeah. I, I believe a couple hit the the six hundred fifty to one. So um, I, I was I was happy to know that was able to help the college boys. So yeah, yeah. Wow. anytime Re- yeah. reach out to me anytime with any bets. I mean, that was like the day before Mexico thing and happy to help. So if anyone has any questions, DMS are open. The, the handles right here. All right. We'll <laughs> see you guys. Thanks. All Pete. right. Later Pete. Oh boys. Okay. Let's recap this one here. So we don't like this new full onslaught thing that I did. That's it's, the, hmm. no, I, um, it's not that I don't hmm. like it. It's that it's new to me. And I don't like new things. That's scary. Um, (laughs) Change is scary. And so I think maybe from a forward looking standpoint with this experience, um, like basically locking yourself in early to saying, okay, we're taking Toronto. That's the only team in the East we're taking. And then maybe taking some smaller stacks out West. Because I think once you start mixing and matching across conferences, and you're trying to build out five man stacks of one or both, you're going to run into some scenarios where you're basically either forced into a one off or you're forced into looking at a situation where if this team makes it to the finals that you're five stacking, they might not have, you know, the, the extra sort of like uh, utility or the flex spot around that five man core, that six man core. Um, mm. And that's a very interesting problem to solve it's, as far as is making it to the finals, you know, like worthwhile without a ton of win equity or is win equity within the finals all that matters because you might know it's 10k up top the first it's not like a third of the prize pool so it's you know if you finish 10th in this contest yeah it's, it's not first but it's also not nothing like it might right. be for bbm or something like that um that's a good so show. That's, that's something that I can't, you know, I don't have the simulation capability to actually like model that out. So I'm trying to hack my way there. And I've not found anything super convincing that once you make it to the finals and you don't have like the perfect, you know, six, six, like, are you actually that dead? I don't know how dead you are. Like that's, that that's really the main problem that I have in that the four, four, two, two that I like, solves for that by making sure that you always you have three different chances at having a full on finals lineup and yes two of those three you only have six players total so you're really locked into those six 
Um, it's just, I don't know. I need to chew on this data a lot more. Um, in, okay. in, uh, it's yeah. really, it's been interesting no. discussion in the discord. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good summary though, because I, I think instinctually I would have just jumped in this contest and been like, let's build for the finals five from the East five from the West and hope those mm -hmm. two teams match up but that might not be optimal in, in any regard. So I think that's it, a really it, good summary of it. It very well could be. That, that, that's right, the sure. problem. It could be. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, we just don't have enough data at this point to, to prove that. So I would honestly, if you play other sports regularly and you have a take like that, like for baseball or something, like mm -hmm. I wouldn't change too much of it for hockey in particular, um, just because um, there is certainty at the top end of lineups as far as who's going to produce. But just like other sports, you know, there's they're just like baseball, I guess, and exactly, or maybe even football because it's a one game sample size. There's not a ton of certainty on who advances. So like correlating your bets that way might just be the, the ticket. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, just a couple little things uh, while we're talking is like, number one, if you're doing like this, like a six, four, two, number one, make sure that two at the very least is on the other side of the bracket. And we did okay. number two is that two is also an incredibly high upside too. like Roman Yossi could outscore every other defenseman and no one would bet an eye like him and the car are in a class above themselves. So in this scenario, I definitely think it makes the most sense. If you have like Colorado, Toronto, adding in like a Nashville top two guys, there really is no one else on that team that has the spike week potential anyways. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even if you get to the scenario where it's Nashville, Toronto, I think you're still having out there for sure. I mean, you overstacked, but again, what team has more high correlated upside than Toronto that really can spike through the power play? And you have the whole power play. So right. it's team specific at the end of the day. And like, that's why I was trying to say is like, depending on what teams you're going with, that's going to dictate how much of this you do. Like, if you are deciding this might be the draft where I end up with a bit of a Western Conference final, and then I'm just going to rely on the Islanders on the other side. Well, you probably should spread the wealth a lot more because if you're right in that scenario, it's so unlikely you're going to get to the finals. Um, so yeah. I think that's more of a four four two two four four two two situation. So it's just situational. Doesn't doesn't like in your same bet with the uh, with Winnipeg there? Doesn't Nashville feel like a really good upset target? Like you have one of the best defensemen on planet Earth. You have a goalie that can get really hot, and then you have like a, a near fifty goal scorer on the other side of that. And they like to play like these tighter, low scoring kind of like that sort of game. Like, isn't that the perfect team to yeah. like anecdotally take down a fake wagon like the Nucks? I think. I mean, I think you know. First off, I, I think the Nucks are are very good defensively, and it really at the end of the day, it's just is Demko one hundred percent healthy? He came back last night. He put, looked fantastic. If Demko is six. back. On if he's right back and where, where we wanted him, and I mean, it, it's a tough team to beat. And on the other side, UC Saros is also a goalie that can get liquid hot and run a team through a first round. So it's probably 50 50. I bet the sports books are going to have it nearly a pick them, and they should. And it's a team that might, no, they're not going to win the West probably, but it's right there at winning the West. So I agree. But I mean, you can make that case for almost any team. Like, why would Winnipeg right. win? It's goaltending. It's only goaltending. Like, Georgiev sucks and Hello Buck goes crazy. Winnipeg wins. Uh, what happens to Edmonton and Vegas, right? I mean, Stuart Skinner, so, like, it's just always going to come down to goaltending almost no matter what. It's very rare you're going to find a series that's just like, you know what? That was, I mean, unless the both goalies play well, but, you know, in, in any other scenario, it's the goalie's going to take the blame. Um, so when you're drafting, just keep that in mind. Like, it's super random. We've had two years in the past five where the team that everyone anointed as the best team in NHL history that had the most points in NHL history lost in the first round. Tampa Bay got swept right. by Columbus. And then last year, Boston lost to Florida. So get, and I said this on the Billy Jones show last night, right at the end, I'm like, you have to try to take away any biases you have, which is probably going to help not hockey, non-hockey fans, people that aren't day-to-day you know, -day in the grind on this and just remove mm -hmm. those biases and draft the best team you can for when you're right. Exactly. Exactly. Like it. It's literally all room dependent. Like, I mean, this is, my, my spiel, because obviously you guys are the hockey guys, you know, and it's nice to implement the knowledge that you guys have, like, in, in this, like, really makes it helpful as far as, like, who to target. But when it comes to building any playoff best ball team, it's all game theory. It's all 100% game theory with, like, yeah, ball knowledge helps. But like you just said, like, the best teams will get upset sometimes <laughs> in the first round. So, like, you know, applying this and just understanding that, like, put – draft a team that can field a full roster in the finals and 
<laughs> and you're in great shape. Like it, it's very, it, it makes it like very accessible for people that aren't puck guys to, to come in and, yeah. and give us a shot. I yeah. Let's, um, Another Sorry. huge leveling factor, I think, is the, the fact that if a team sweeps, like, for example, the team that we have in Toronto, if they win two of their games two to one and, you know, the other two games are like four to two or whatever and they sweep, you might not advance that Toronto team despite them advancing. Like, that's just yeah. so that's a really big uh, normalization factor where I don't think there's like an astronomical edge to even people who are drafting perfectly. They're drafting the best players like the better you are the less likely you are to continue to acquire points throughout that set round. So like, it's a really interesting phenomenon that I I'm struggling with certainly yeah. thinking about it. Um, and I think cool. clears out in the data, we're not seeing any, you know, number one strategy run away with things like we did in, yeah. you know, the, in the regular season where the three, seven, three, three data, every time I ran it, it was like, Oh, that's obviously the best strategy for advancement for mm -hmm. whatever, you know, just for very uh, reasons that we can talk about in the fall. But, um, you know, there's nothing like that that I found so far here that's like the, the magic ticket. And I think that's by design. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So I don't think it's a necessarily yeah. difficult game to get into as long as you have some element of strategy. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think you kind of mentioned the perfect point of why ball knowledge is important, though, to an extent. And that is because it, when you're right with those players that hit their peaks, knowing the correlation, knowing that, OK, if you took Robertson and hence Pavelski is the guy that comes along. That's probably where you get the last little bit of edge. Um, so when you're right, making sure you're getting the right correlations. And if, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but you can probably find the lines and some of them change a little bit here or there. But in reality, most of it kind of correlates to ADP. So it's not too difficult. But if you have any questions, always let me know. And uh, cool. yeah. Cool. Um, thank you, Michael, for knowing that this was the player. Yeah, Fraser Minton was the guy I was thinking of there um let's 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 get away from like the the crazy sicko um deep down the rabbit hole uh data bullshit and go back to just being uh guys who throw rocks against the wall for a second and let's 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 pick some winners here who we think you know some upsets what which of these series if this holds true again the kings and the knights can flip later tonight but seems unlikely but if these hold true like which kind of environments would you guys be going like hey this could go the distance this could be high scoring and uh who could upset and or who has no chance kind of thing i guess i'll, I'll go first I, I mean we'll just go series by series i'll give one little take i mean sure, tampa perfect. florida i feel like will be a lot of fireworks i'm definitely kind of shifting up both teams in reality because i think it's going to be close i like florida but that I think will have a lot of offense upside. Uh, Toronto will try to get Boston into track meets, and Boston will try to keep it from being a track meet. I think this obviously hurts Toronto a little bit going against Boston because of the goaltending is just so incredibly good in Boston. But you know, I'm not deterred completely um, on either side. Is there and any, uh, hmm? sorry, is there any chance Boston does anything funky with goaltending and bounces back and forth like Swayman yeah. and whatnot? I think they do. Like I, I, they do. I think that's more likely than not um there's been little crumbs out of the beat writers that sort of seem like they're setting it up for that to be the case and i think that's you know honestly the right decision for them um which does make it difficult from a you know drafting perspective for our purposes do yeah. we have a favorite yeah. swayman see i lean i lean Olmark because i don't think they just give swayman the net entirely but again okay. i don't think it's wrong to bet on either one of them i'm fine taking you know swim in this draft i'll mark the next draft like i i don't think um i i just don't uh, think there's uh, a wrong answer there just don't take I, yeah. both taking both I'll have, your <laughs> yeah i'll have, okay. I'll have 100 percent swim in over Olmark, but i will probably have you know five percent top swim in um third series it's a, it's an absolute war zone for the Capitals. I would absolutely love to see them keep it competitive, but the Rangers are the better team here. Um, it'll be really tough to get away from that, uh, the goaltending, just really everything. I mean, Lindgren's been great, but I do think it's a little bit boring, more boring than it could have been, um, but whatever. And then the last game, the last series, I mean, I actually, like everyone's already talking, oh, the boring, like you can go to bed. Who cares about the Hurricanes Islanders? Like that's really not how the Islanders play. So I'm optimistic this could be a little bit better than maybe the public perception doesn't mean it's going to be great because the hurricanes still kind of, you know, control possession, sit on it, uh, shoot a punch. So yeah. Um, I mean, Tom Wilson, Rampage. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fireworks in all these series, but again, I think the upside of 
drafting is Florida and Tampa. And it seems like people are just going to let them slide further now because it's a more difficult matchup. But again, like one of those teams is going to win. And right. Yeah. I think they're going to be involved heavily in the advancement. So I like Matt, that. any thoughts on the East? I think in the East, the, the Toronto and Florida are the two teams I like the most. The Rangers okay. are really interesting. It's just they're really expensive. And so, you know, you're not getting good lines to bet on them. You're not getting good lines to draft them. And it's just sort of like, it seems priced in versus I think Florida and Toronto, honestly, I think they both have pretty substantial edges in their series, just as a guy throwing rocks at a wall here. Um, <laughs> and they just seem weirdly not quite priced like that um, in anything I've looked at between drafting and betting and whatnot. I, I look at this and I go back to what you guys said earlier that like Rangers and Canes look like one of them are going to the Eastern Conference final. Yeah, it'd yeah. be tough. I mean, it, again, like Sororkin is still Sororkin, and like Lindgren did make, I think it was like 67 of 68 saves in the past two games to get him into the playoffs, and like anything can happen. But uh, yeah, it would be really, really tough for me to assume that either of these two teams figured out to that extent. Uh, in the West, it, I mean, Dallas and Vegas is – that, that could have been the Western Conference Finals. I mean, we are just blessed if that happens. Although, I no, wait. I, I think it's going to be Edmonton and Vegas. That's wrong. So that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. I, it depends on what happens with the, the Kings final game. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. yeah that's, we're going to work on the assumption it's going to be Dallas and the Kings. That's the most, the most likely scenario. Right? Okay. That, really quick. I don't know what's the most likely or not, but um, I – I do think that if Vegas takes on Edmonton, we saw last year that series was an unbelievable, uh, I mean, it was so much fun in the second round. And Vegas certainly does seem to have something over Edmonton. They have a really deep blue line that can skate with Connor McDavid. Um, they didn't necessarily contain him, but they were able to score enough to sort of, you know, offset the damage McDavid and Dreisaitl could do. Um, Edmonton's tried everything they can to reinforce their lineup for this matchup with Vegas. So if it happens around one, like that is an absolute grab your popcorn and stay up late, you know, to watch it because yeah. that's nice. that's going to be a fun one. Yeah. If Dallas gets a single point and Vegas beats Anaheim, then Vegas will play Edmonton. So we'll just go with Dallas and the Kings, which is the most likely. Uh, the Kings they will they will have to rely on Ottinger being pretty bad um, to get there. They're not nearly as deep, they're not as good defensively, and they're just not as good in net. It would take quite an upset, but. Anything can happen. It happened last year. I mean, I was the one saying Seattle's not that bad. Like they could upset the avalanche. I think that's fine. And they did. Um, that was a bet that I, you know, I did place and I, I went for it based on puck luck. So anything can happen. Um, but again, it would be quite an upset. Series two. I mean, I'm back in the Jets all the way. It's a minus 135. So I mentioned earlier, minus 135 for Colorado, a team that many consider to be a favorite to win the cup again. And it's minus 135 plus 110 or plus 115. So pretty close. Uh, again, goaltending is going to be the name of the game. McKinnon's the name of the game here. You know, can the Jets, uh, who I think have a lot more depth than people give them credit for, figure it out? But I do think that series does have a lot of fireworks because of you know Colorado is so correlated at the top on offense. A name we didn't mention was Jonathan Duran, who I've kind of just changed my tune on. I definitely think he's viable in Colorado stacks. Um, and Winnipeg, it's just really easy to kind of know where to go. Uh, Vancouver will be playing uh, Nashville. That is right. I mean, this is probably a just a dead pick Um, and I really don't want to give a lean either way. It's just a lot more difficult to get overboard. Like anything over four for Nashville, I think you've done it incorrect. There just aren't that many guys with elite upside outside of, you know, the goalie, Forsberg. I mean, you know, Saros, let's say his name. Saros, Forsberg, and Yossi. One more max, probably ROR, but I don't know. You don't have to. Um, and then – you know, Vancouver, I think, you know, if you're betting on them, you're betting on the shooting percentage still getting there. I think you're fine to go with a five man uh, max there. And then Edmonton and Vegas, get your, you know, get your popcorn, get it's going to be the best series. Vegas is going to bring back Mark Stone. They're going to have a full roster. They're going to be, you know, 50 million over the cap. Everyone's going to bitch and complain. And you have Connor McDavid on the other side. Um, as I've been saying all along, I mean, I'm a Sabres fan. They haven't made the playoffs in 13 years. I was just learning to drive last time they made the playoffs. I wish they would cheat. It's not cheating either. It, they're just they're <laughs> using the rules. Mark they're Stone has a lacerated spleen, and he's going to try and play professional ice hockey in the playoffs. Like this sport yeah. is just insane. Like I mean, yeah. keep, I'm not, yeah. I mean, I, I am are not going to complain about it. Are we moving Mark Stone officially over the Ryan O'Reilly, aka Ryan O'Neills, and Jamie Ben, aka Mister Nails, power rankings now? 
is Mark Stone the one zero one in the Nails draft? <laughs> it's. I mean, Matt the Chuck played with like a like what? Uh, what did he have? Torn labrum, I think. Torn labrum last year. Like, <laughs> there's been some absolutely unbelievable injuries that we've seen. So, like, Joe Thornton uh, played on a torn ACL. I mean, John <laughs> wow. Carlson. Uh, John Carlson almost died and came back like two months later. He he got hit in the head and he had a like a brain contu- like a, a something. Skull in- I love this sport. Fractured skull and like he, like it, it was it unbelievable. Like like you're you could go on and on here. So it, yeah, I mean you have to put him in there. I mean I personally believe he did have a last rate of spleen. It probably took a good amount of time to fix. He probably could have come back earlier, but I've never had a last rate of spleen, so I'm not going to argue. That sounds like a blitz the league injury if you remember that game. Is this is this true here? The Matthew yeah, Matt. Bro- yeah. Yeah, Matthew yeah. Kachuk's could, brother had to dress him for yeah. the finals. He couldn't raise his arm to put his shirt on. Yeah. Oh my god, that's sick. That is yeah. that's one of the better stories I've ever heard. Yeah. I every every that. year, yeah. I have a couple family members that are doctors, and they're always like, "What were the injuries?" And I'll send them over, and they're like, "No, the, no, no, there's no way." And I'm like, "Yeah, the guy, <laughs> this, is, this is him." Um, but oh, yeah, so that series, though, I, I mean, I'm back in the Oilers all the way, and I like. I'm hoping that once I'm going to wait to the last minute because I think their odds will drop with the Vegas matchup getting confirmed. You got to be good teams to win the cup. I don't care what anyone says. Like if they beat Vegas, they're going to either have Vancouver or the Predators next. So pretty similar to looking like the opposite version of the Metro where it's like the easy right. first round. It's like, I don't care. I'm hoping it drops. I'm back in the Oilers and I think Vegas is great. But at the end of the day, Connor McDavid is getting a cup sooner or later and this I do think is actually the team to do it. Love it. Yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, Oilers have been they, they I mean people forget they started what 0 and 10, 0 and 11, and then had a coaching change. They did. Like they've yeah, yeah, they've they've been like the best team in the West since that day. Yeah, I feel bad for Jay Woodcroft. I was talking to because Sabres, you know, fire their coach, and people are like, What do you think? And I'm like, I like Woodcroft because the only thing he didn't do is tell McDavid not to get hurt. And tell his goalies to save like at least more than eight of ten pucks that go on net. And like he forgot to tell those guys that. And then they start <laughs> losing. It was such That's a big mistake he made and it cost him his job. But um, you know, not block is I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like you could put me behind the bench and just tell McDavid to hey, go be an alien. And he's like, Well, good news, I am. And then he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, beautiful breakdown, gentlemen. Um I think we should uh, tie a bow on it here unless there is anything else you guys want to say. I, I mean, I had some other questions for you guys. Maybe uh, I guess we can figure out teams not to pair together based on how the bracket's going to go. So don't pair like the Canes and the Rangers together. Don't pair uh, Canucks and Oilers are probably a bad one to try and pair together because they'll meet in the second round if they both get there. Uh, some of that sort of stuff so people can figure it out. So always East remember is, the bracket thing. No uh, yeah. reseeding. Say again. The yeah, East is completely locked. So what you see in the okay. East is what you're getting. Uh, West, there's a few things, but what you see is, I would say, 75% likely to happen. Like there's no, it would be a pretty big upset for any team to make that happen. Okay. Make a change. Sounds so. good. Um, we kind of went through the the chalk teams and the upset teams there. We're kind of uh, guys who could steal some were the Jets, the Predators, <laughs> Um, we expect fireworks in the battle of Florida. Uh, the kind of easiest paths we alluded were Rangers and Canes there. Um, Leafs always find a way to fuck it up against the Bruins, but hopefully not this year. (laughs) And, and, uh, and the jets, the jets, we are now officially a jets podcast because Hellebuck is arguably the best goalie in puck and Kyle Connors can score it with the best of them. And Colorado is a fake wagon apparently <laughs> is that a good summary of of all that i'd be remiss not to ask who the uh best scroll the f down and underrated adp guys are from you guys in drafts and then we'll close it out matt that's man that that is an interesting one um i guess scroll the f down you kind of dj kind of stole my thunder on jonathan juin because i was the most on i was the most unabashed hate jonathan juin whatever but all of a sudden he just started shooting um, and, you know, you need okay. shots to produce fantasy points. And so he was doing all of that. Um, I like Alexis Lafreniere on the Rangers. If you're stacking Panarin and Trocek and you need someone late, maybe 
you know, instead of a Truba or something, Lafreniere plays with them on five on five. He's a former first overall pick. He's, I mean, he's an extraordinary player. He just doesn't get the power play time, which, you know, is what drives down his ADP and his production, generally speaking. Um, but we know that as the playoffs get deeper, the penalties tend to go down. And so there's usually uh, more emphasis on five on five scoring. And uh, he's certainly a player. I think he, he doesn't even get drafted in any drafts yep. like i mean he's very rarely getting drafted and he's super skilled he's you know directly correlated with panarin so i guess that's one mm -hmm. good guy um yeah. and then yeah. adrian can be in la is like another one okay rarely gets yeah. drafted but if la advances he's going to be a fantasy monster i mean he you know, yeah. he goes very early in best puck regular season stuff um and it's just a matter of if his team can sort of help him get out of rounds one and two yeah, we I like him up. more than like uh, Fiala and Anzi Kopitar and that sort of stuff. Kempe is kind of like the engine that drives that bus. I think in so. this format, in this format okay. with the shooting and stuff. Um, I, I'll give three, and then I got to jump to a work meeting now. It's finally yep. uh, starting. Uh, I will Mark Stone. Honestly, like if you're getting Vegas, I mean he's down the line. I know he's not a rates monster, but he definitely could get a metric ton of points. Basically, going undrafted. Um, if you're going Boston, I go Charlie Coyle over Zaka if you need a center. So I'm just going to okay. throw him in there like very silently, almost a 30 goal scorer and not the best, but like your last pick, you're already hitched to Boston, a team that could definitely win the cup. Um, I've been taking him a little bit and then I'm just going to, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think Matt took my thunder. Uh, you know what? I'll go, uh, I'll take Brock Besser actually. Like that's another guy going undrafted where if you're taking Vancouver, it seems like, there's not many winger options and people are just leaving him off. And this guy has like 40 goals. So yeah, I don't 40 goals it. and PP one. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to jump. All right. I think we're closing on it anyways. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. We'll tie bow on it. Um, right there. All right. Thank you guys so much, everybody. Oh, there's only three cut myself out. What an <laughs> idiot. Um, thank you to the morning skate pod. There we go. Thank you to the Morning Skate Pod. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, DJ. Uh, much appreciated. The definitive breakdown there. Uh, any parting words from anybody else? Anytime, guys. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yes. appreciate you guys coming on, man. Talking puck with us. This has been a blast, and I'm definitely going to get my Zambonis in. Damn straight. What we do. Um, See you in the streets. <laughs> See you in the streets. All right, do us a favor, guys. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, notification bell. Before you leave, I'm going to drop a link in the chat right now if you want some more Zamboni content. There is DJ Mitchell's stream with our guy, uh, Billy Jones, from last night. And, uh, yeah, I mean, enjoy the last night. Is tonight the last night of regular season, Pa? Uh, tomorrow night is the last tomorrow night. night. All right. Enjoy the last two nights of puck. Best of luck to everybody in the Hoop Streets tonight. Best of luck in the MLB Streets as well. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with something behind the paywall. Not 100% sure what we're going to do um, just because it's kind of a gross day for everything, but we will definitely have some content for you. Uh, and then Friday, big NBA day, big MLB day. We will hit those. And then Monday, guys, we got a very special guest, uh, courtesy of Underdog Fantasy. Hayden Winks is going to join us, and we are going to go ahead and talk about the NFL draft. Uh, on behalf of Nez, myself, Moods, uh, Pete, DJ, everybody's favorite time of the show, the end. Peace.